Hello and welcome back to revise GCSEHistory.co.uk. This video today is the third and final video in the subtopic the Plains Indians. And in this video today, we're going to be looking at the beliefs of the Plains Indians. Okay, so what were the religious beliefs of the Sioux Indians? If you remember, when we use the term Plains Indians, we're talking about the many different nations of uh, Native Americans that lived on the Great Plains. But really, we're usually talking about the Sioux Indians, as they were sort of the main nation of Indians. So what were the religious beliefs of the Sioux? Well, what did they believe about spirits? They believed in Wakan Tanka, and he was the Great Spirit. They believed, they believed that Wakan Tanka, the Great Spirit, created the world and everything that lives. So he created everything. Uh, the, plain, uh, the Sioux Indians also believed that all living thing, all things had spirits, such as uh, mountains, rocks, everything, and spirits could influence their lives. So they believed in the Wak it, they believed in Wakan Tanka, the Great Spirit. He created the world and everything that lives, and they thought everything had its spirit. What did they believe about dances and ceremonies? Well, dances were used when the whole tribe needed to contact the spirit world. The buffalo dance was used to call call the spirit world to get the buffalo to the hunting ground before hunting. And the most famous ceremony, ceremony done by the Sioux Indians was the sun dance. And that was used, sun dance, to get guidance from the spirit world. So dance and ceremonies were used when the whole tribe needed to contact the spirit world. What did they believe about the land in terms of their religious beliefs? Uh, the Sioux Indians believed they came from the land and would return to the land when they died. They believed that land couldn't be owned or bought by any individual or not even by a whole nation. High places were sacred to them as they were closer to the spirit world and they believed the Black Hills whoops, were sorry, the Black Hills were particularly sacred as this was the place where their nation began. And this final point is important later as we progress through the topic. So the Black Hills is where the nation began and that's why it's particularly sacred. Circles what did they believe about circles? Well, the Sioux Indians believed in the circle of nature, and circles surrounded them everywhere. That's where they got this belief from. For example, the moon, uh, the sun, the horizon. They believed that they lived through the circle of life. So birth, childhood, adulthood, old age, second childhood, and death. And their villages and teepees were circular in honour of this in honour of their beliefs about circles. So what did they believe about medicine, uh, and particularly medicine men? A medicine man was an Indian man who people believed could cure illness by using the spirits. All spirit power was actually considered medicine. People believed that they became ill if they possessed an evil spirit, and a medicine man would try to drive out evil spirits and he would sometimes use practical remedies such as herbs to do this. So finally, what did they believe about visions? Well, visions were a way of contacting the spirit world. Names were given to Sioux Indians as a result of, as a result of visions. For example, Sitting Bull, Red, Cro Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, all those sort of silly names they were given as a result of visions. And women could easily contact the spirit world and that gave them uh, status and menstruation began the start of this process in women when they could first contact the spirit world and young girls received training on how to contact the spirits and visions influenced decision making such as war. So this slide here, there's a lot of information that you need to be aware of and I think to be honest you do need to be aware of every single point on this slide as it's all really important. So this slide contains a lot of information about the religious beliefs of the Sioux Indians. Whoops. So 
family life of the Sioux. What was it like? Let's have a look. Well, we're going to break this down into four key family members. Men, women, children and old people. So firstly, let's look at men. Well, the men were responsible for hunting, looking after the horses and protecting the band. They were judged by their skills as hunters, warriors and horsemen. So what about the women? Well, the women were responsible for the teepee, preparing food, fetching water, whoops, fetching water and making clothing and other household items. Women were judged by their skills at crafts and homemakers and they were highly valued as the bearers of children. Next, let's have a look at children. Well, uh, Sioux children were highly valued as they were seen as the future of the Sioux Indian Band. They learned useful skills from their parents and other relatives. Boys were taught to hunt and girls were taught to maintain a home. So boys and girls were brought up uh, by being taught different skills uh, that they would need to be successful men and women Sioux Indians. So let's have a look at old people, or they were sometimes called elders. Old people were important as they were able to give advice. They were involved in helping to bring up the children. When they became too old or weak to keep up with the uh, the nomadic migrations, because if you can if you can remember from our previous videos, we've said that the Plains Indians, particularly the Sioux Indians, moved about on the plains following the buffalo. So when old people became too old and weak to keep up with these movements, they might be left behind. So the Sioux Indians would leave behind their old people when they were too old and weak to continue. And this is called exposure as they exposed them to the harsh conditions of the plains as they were left to fend for themselves and they would die. And this sem this seemed very harsh and uh, savage-like to uh, many many non-Indian individuals, many white Americans thought that this was rather unkind, unconsiderate and rather subhuman but the Sioux Indians did this because they thought that the survival of the whole band was of greater importance than any individual. So if it was near in winter and the whole band needed to move on or they might die and become very unwell due to the harsh winter weather conditions they would leave behind the old people who couldn't keep up with the rest of the band because otherwise the whole band might die and that the survival of the whole band is more important than any individual. Alright, so let's have a look at Sioux warfare, how the Sioux fought. So most men were warriors and they fought to show their bravery or to gain a wife. There are two sort of practices you it's a good idea to be aware of and these are counting coop and scalping. So, the practice of counting coop was when a warrior got close to his enemy and merely touched him with a special stick rather than actually killing him. This was considered very brave and it was actually considered much braver than killing him because he got close to the en whoops, he got close to the enemy without actually killing him. So this was considered braver than killing the enemy just to touch him with a special stick. Another practice of Sioux warfare that you need to be aware of is scalping, and that's when a warrior <coughs> that's when a warrior cut off the enemy's scalp once defeated. So this uh, this picture up here actually shows a Sioux Indian warrior cutting off the scalp of a white Indian. So when uh, the Sioux warrior defeated their enemy, they would slice off their scalp, which is the top skin part of their head, and scalps of enemies were put on teepees as trophies, so they were kept as trophies. And this sent quite savage-like, and again subhuman and quite evil to many people who didn't understand the uh, religious beliefs of the Sioux, but it actually made perfect sense to the Sioux Indians. Scalping was done because if a warrior lost his scalp, he couldn't go to the happy hunting ground, and that was what the Sioux Indians called the afterlife. So, the Sioux Indians would cut off the scalp of their enemy once he had been killed, 
so that they would not see their enemy again in the happy hunting ground or the afterlife because they needed that the, because they believed that you needed your scalp to go into the afterlife another final key point about Sioux warfare you need to be aware of is that it was considered very unheroic to die in battle if people die in war today if soldiers die in war we consider it heroic because they've died fighting for their country but the Sioux Indians thought it was very unheroic to die in battle because a warrior left his family and children to look after themselves. So, finally, why did the Sioux Indians go to war? Here are a few reasons. To, they went to war to steal horses or captives, revenge for a previous attack, they went to war to destroy a troublesome enemy, rivalry for hunting grounds, and they also later... As we progress through the American West topic, we're going to look at this in more detail to protect their way of life from white settlers. A really key point here you really need to be aware of is that they did not go to war to conquer lands or tribes as they were nomadic and they believed that land couldn't be owned also. So we've gone through all of the knowledge we need to cover for today's video. Uh, here are four quick questions based on all the content of today's video. Pause the video here if you want to, scribble down some answers to these questions. If not, feel free to carry on watching and we'll do the questions together. Okay, so question one. What was the Great Spirit called? Well, the Great Spirit was called Wakan Tanka and he created everything that lived. Why were dances and ceremonies used by the Sioux Indians? Give an example of a famous dance. Uh, they were used when the whole tribe needed whoops, to contact the spirit world, the spirits. And an example of a dance would be uh, the sun dance which was done to get guidance from the spirit world or you could have said the buffalo dance for example which was done to call the buffalo to the hunting ground alright question three what happened when all the members of the Sioux Indian tribe became to old and weak uh, they were left behind and we call this exposure and if you remember uh, the Sioux Indians didn't do this to be savages or to be unkind. They did this because they believed that the survival of the whole band was uh, of greater importance than the survival of any individual. Finally, question four. Why did the Sioux Indians remove the scalps of their enemies? Uh, so, they would not meet the enemy. Meet their enemy. again in the afterlife they believe that you needed your scalp to go into the afterlife and if your scalp was cut off you could not enter the afterlife alright so there are the answers to the four quick knowledge recall questions for today's video thanks for watching I hope that you found it useful this is actually the end of the topic uh, well the end of the subtopic the Plains Indians and the next topic we're going to be looking at is the early settlers. Okay, thanks for watching, and if you found it useful, head over to the website, advise at gcsehistory.co.uk, and tell all your friends about the website. Thanks, see you soon.